Welcome to the Frightfully Good Vodcast and Podcast with your hosts Anne Rekovic from Oz Paratech and Renata Daniel from Newcastle Ghost Tours. And tonight we are exploring the letter C. We're going to be, we're going to be talking about crisis apparitions. And one of the main men of parapsychology, Sir Henry Crooks. William. So, we will be back shortly. Stay tuned. Hello. I stuffed that up. It's Sir William Crooks ah! and not Sir Henry Crooks. So Jeez. I, no, Louise. He's going to come haunt us now. <laughs> He's sitting up on the shelf there looking at us going, what, who's she talking about? My brother? <laughs> I don't have a brother. <laughs> hey everyone, how have you all been? How's your week been? Where is our eye line on this? We can, we've been to a video course this morning. Did you see how professional we look? No. As you can see, so much has changed. I think eyeliner is over here. He, there it is, up there. Up there. Where, the, where the live button is, so that we can all look right into your eyes. And... Mm. Anyway, I'm going to Hi. switch on. Uh, I keep looking at myself instead. <laughs> Understandable, I suppose. Anyway, yes, welcome to the ABC of Paranormal Strangeness, as Renata likes to call it. I really like that title, Do you? Renata. Do you? It did good. Mm. So this is part one of the letter C for this <laughs> evening. And we're going to be talking about crisis apparitions. Hi, Peter. And we are also going to be talking about Sir William mm -hmm. Crooks, Thank you. one of the main men to do with the um, parapsychology um, psychical society. Research. Psychical research. Psychical yes, research, in, Renata. Yes, in England. We've had a big day. We've, we've been to training. A bit brain drained I am at the moment. and My neck and back's been out for a couple of days, so I'm a little bit vague. That's all right. I pulled some shit out of her. She did. It's all good. Hand went right up there. She grabbed it and yanked it, it out. Yanked it out, whatever it might have been. Yeah, I don't know. It's over there on the floor. <laughs> Can you at least get it out of the <laughs> seance room, whatever it is? Um, yeah, so I'm just going to quickly grab something off the shelf. Now, call to action. We need a call to action, apparently. Okay, what's the call to action going to be? First off, can they share our, our um, Yes, feed? please share, share, share with your friends uh, the Frightfully Good vodcast that we are on. Um, grab someone new, grab a friend who may be interested in all things spooky and ooky and tell them that every Monday night we are on. Actually, tell them we're live now. And then what you can do is give this video a thumbs up, some hearts. A heart, a heart hearts, please. Hearts are better than the thumbs hearts, up, apparently, yep. according to the algorithm. Hello from Texas. Oh, hi, hi, hello, Donna. Wow. How are you? How are you? Uh, and, um, yeah, share the love around. We're just waiting to let a, a few people come on because we know sometimes there's a bit of a delay <laughs> hi, in Amy. the feed. So uh, we'll give you the opportunity. Meanwhile, check out this handsome dude. Thank you for the hearts. There he is. Mm. Now, you wonder why we picked Sir William. And there is a story behind Sir William. Um, are we going to do Sir William first? Yeah, do Sir William first. I, I have a real soft spot sir, for Sir William. I did uh, We did a um, r really very, very interesting um, psychic session physical mediumship yeah, physical was. mediumship with um a gentleman from america yeah uh and um sir michael oh not sir michael, michael, michael shane. shane michael shane oh, god i'm getting it's, it all wrong tonight. Really the words tonight, what, it's whatever i pulled out of you has now come on to me i'm You're sure You're welcome <laughs> just wipe it off and, and apologize it was quite quite interesting that uh, he mentioned that one of the uh, people on our uh, spirit team was named william Ah, the, the actor said Sir William yes, Crooks. Sir William Crooks. So. And we went, who the hell's that? 
So with that, we actually looked up Sir William Crookes and found out that he was one of the pioneers of psychical research and was actually the very first, from what um, I can see in my reading, very first scientist to come on board and say, yeah, there is something going on with all this psychic stuff. So, And we're talking about the 1800s, so it's not like today mm. to step out of your comfort zone as a scientist and say, I really believe that there is something happening after we die is a very Yeah, good scientists don't like to do that sort of no, thing no, because no. Um, they, they feel that um, they'll hi, be laughed. Ashley from the USA. They will be laughed at. Bless you. Oh, hi there. Ashley, thank you for joining us. I hope you can understand us. We'll, we'll speak. talk slowly. Yeah. I'll put on, I can you. put on my North Queensland accent. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, and that's not making fun of people. I'm just really good at doing that accent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an actor. I was meant to be able to do different accents. All right. So let's get on to Sir William Crook. So he is one of our... Because um, we sit in circle uh, every week and um, do our meditation and give ourselves um, to our spirit team to develop us in whatever way they see fit. So, yes, we are that crazy. Uh, <laughs> There's method to the madness. We are in top to service. Death people. We are in service. That's what we like to say. So we were told that Sir okay. William was one of our uh, mentors, one of our teachers, guides. So... We have the lovely photo of Sir William there and he sits up on the shelf and watches over us uh, while we meditate and if we're having a, a tough time, we call him in. We'll call him in and ask for help and normally we do get over whatever the problem is that we're stuck on. Yeah. Um, so he was uh, born in 1832 and died in 1919. He was a British chemist, a physicist who attended the Royal College of Chemistry in London. Um, and he worked on something called a spectroscopy. I'm probably going to say it all wrong. <laughs> Thank you. We like yours too. I'm sure it's great. Uh, sorry, I'm speaking to Ashley from America there. Um, I won't do my American accent. It's bad. <laughs> um, he was also a pioneer of vacuum tubes, uh, inventing what's called the Crookes tube. Uh, which was made in 1875. Uh, it was a foundational discovery that eventually changed the whole of chemistry and physics. So he was a free thinker. He was thinking outside the box. Um, and He looks uh, like he's judging us, doesn't he? We're being judged. Oh, there's, there's a whole... <laughs> now, look, as I started to de delve into his history, because I was trying to look at it from a logical viewpoint and also from the the psychical viewpoint um i was starting to feel a little bit embarrassed for poor sir william anyway he's credited in discovering the element thallium in 1861 with the help of the spectroscopy sounds like something they put up your butt <laughs> uh, and he was the first to describe the spectrum of terrestrial helium oh in 1865. Um, now, he was also the inventor of the radio meter. Mm -hmm. and Which I was going to bring, but I forgot. She's got one. Yeah, I do. They sell it as a toy nowadays. And it's actually a really interesting little gadget. It uh, looks like a light bulb. Right? So it's got a glass outside. And inside, it's like a little umbrella that moves around, spins around. And when the sun hits it, creates energy and it makes it spin so if you're actually practicing um, psychic development and you're practicing uh, energy through hands you can actually use your hands to put around that little gadget and see if you can make the thing spin i like so that i think yeah, we should take quite, that to uh, interesting investigations and see if uh any you know invite hmm. the spirits to come in and see if they can move it for us um, hey, all that's right. a good idea. I have them occasionally. <laughs> uh, all right, so we uh, he also now this one really fascinated me. In pardon me, invented one hundred percent ultraviolet blocking sunglass lenses. I know you invented sunglasses. Isn't that cool? How cool is that? Oh, I love it. Um, so he became interested in spiritualism and joined the Society for Psychical Research and eventually became the president in the eighteen nineties. 
Uh, he also joined the Theosophical Society and the Ghost Club. Now, I was a member of the Ghost Club, Club for a few years. It is the oldest surviving linear... Um, so the, it hasn't stopped and started. It's just kept going for years and years. I'm mm -hmm. going to rejoin back up again. I, I unfortunately had to drop <coughs> out when Roman's work wasn't looking real good. But I'd like to join back up again. It was now, really good. Our lovely Beth Lust... Uh, uh, oh, Beth, Beth, oh, Beth, Beth, Beth Darlington. Darlington. That has moved over to England. Is Names now, are bad tonight. It's now a member of yep. the Ghost Club. Yep. Um, and I think anyone can join. <laughs> no, I did actually have to apply. I do remember having to apply. And um, when I withdrew, they said, uh, you let us know when you're ready to come back and we'll, we'll let you back in. Um, so he was uh, president of the Ghost Club from 1907 to 1912. And he's also initiated into the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. So he's Ooh, dabbled in quite a bit of stuff. Has. That's deep, the Golden Dawn. Yeah. So, look, the, the reason why he possibly became interested in spiritualism was because his younger brother, Philip, died at the age of 21 when he was in the Caribbean from yellow fever. Um, and uh, as it was in those days, they had no way to say goodbye to their loved ones who had gone abroad. They, it's not like they could bring the body back, especially if they'd had yellow fever. Um, and you couldn't have your, your farewells. So many people did turn to mediums and psychics to contact their loved ones to see if they were okay. Had they crossed over? Were they at peace? And it gave the people here who were still alive peace. Um, so he was uh, taken by a Cromwell Fleetwood Varley to attend a seance to get in touch with his brother. Now, he became so fascinated with this that he actually started to research this psychic phenomena. And quite a few mediums were quite willing to work with him. Um, some really well-known ones like uh, Katie Fox, um, who was one of the Fox sisters. Uh, Florence Cook and D.D. Home. Now, he's a really famous one. You may have seen photos of him where he's in a chair levitating across an audience and he's known to have gone in one window, outside and back in through another window with levitation. Mm. Um, so he got to study them. Now, I'm going to just skip some of this because I found some of the experiments that he actually did, which I thought was fascinating. Now, we've got to try and visualise this. I, I hope it's not too dry, but I found it really interesting. Um, so one of the tests he did with D.D. Holmes is what he got a an accordion. Remember the squeeze box with the keyboard on it? I did that so well. Um, and he had it partly under a table, and then the accordion was held by Holmes. With, and they had like a, a cage sort of structure on the outside of it, so... Holmes was slipping his hand through the end of it, through the cage, and then it was dangling down underneath inside the cage. So nobody could influence what was inside the cage, and he had his hand on the top. I've just realised the dogs are still in the room with me, and I hope they don't go berserk. <laughs> um, so what was seen is that the accordion started to move and rotate and gyrate. They had... Um, Holmes had his, not Holmes, Crooks had his assistant sitting underneath the table watching to make sure that nobody was interfering with it um, and Holmes's hand was just holding it like that, nice and steady and the then some of the keys started to press down and they heard a couple of squeaks and pips and then it started to play music. So everyone was sitting there just watching this happen. Apparently it was done in some reasonable amount of light. Uh, we all know that in seance conditions it's supposed to be done in pitch black because light's supposed to be able to uh, disrupt the energy flow or cause damage to the... Stop Stop using that face, Renata. <laughs> um, got a visitor. Oh, have we? Yeah, Who have we got visitor. with us? I don't know. I Is don't it know. my friend you just pulled off me? Um, no. Um, Lorraine, your name came up. Lorraine Jo Davidson, your name came up when our visitor arrived. So this, I think, is associated with you, my sweet. We have a visitor, and I think it is a female that has come through at this point in time, who, my love, is in spirit uh, female. Um, it may well be very, very close to an anniversary around her that is coming up, but she's certainly come through pretty strongly. <laughs> Just saying hello. 
just hijack the show. If that's yes, okay. Lorraine, just let us All know. All welcome. Who you have Except whoever was attached to me before that was giving me a bad neck and back. Anyway, they then took the experiment a little bit further and they electrified the cage. Holy Obviously, cow. he wasn't touching it at this stage, so they tied off the accordion, so it was just hanging suspended in the cage. Um, and that didn't make any difference. It, it started to move and emit sounds, even as it was without the current. Um, this is written as the report. The accordion now again taken without any visible touch from Mr. Holmes' hand, which he removed from it entirely, which I would hope if it was electrified. Wow. I and two others <coughs> um, present not only seeing his released hand, but also the accordion, the accordion floating about with no visible support within the cage. Now, this is a man of science, and he would not risk his reputation in saying this if he didn't honestly believe that he had seen it. But as you know with my stories, there is always a twist. Lorraine, <laughs> spaghetti bolognese. <laughs> um, so it was repeated a second time. Um, it, once again, it played chords and melody. That's amazing. Yeah, isn't That's it? That's amazing, yeah. Um, Mrs. Crooks. Mrs. W. M. Crooks saw um, over the medium shoulder a hand that didn't seem to belong to anything. Now, this is really interesting. Uh, touching the flower in uh, the medium's buttonhole, right? The flower was taken by the hand and given to Mrs. I. This is Mrs. I. And the green leaf was given to a Mr. T. Now, Mrs. Crooks and Mr. Holmes saw the hand doing this. The others only saw the flower and leaf moving through the air. So some saw a disembodied hand and some saw things floating through the air in front of them. Um, and this is what the Crooks sort of came at. In common with other investigators, Crooks struggled to reconcile himself to what he witnessed. He said he felt that he experienced a mental contraction between reason which pronounces it to be scientifically impossible and the consciousness that my senses and these corroborated as they were by the senses of all those who were present and are not lying witnesses when they testify against my preconceptions. In other words, he had a mind fart. <laughs> I was going to say that. <laughs> he, he, he just went... Yeah, his mind just exploded. Yeah. Now, this is sort of what happened to me with some of the seances I've seen as well. I have a very logical mind and I try very hard to um, work out what is going on. And uh, I have seen more things than most of people in the public seances and I have seen things that I cannot explain. Um, so I, I sort of get where he's coming from. But let's go to the little twist, shall we? My sister and I are not talking. Oh, okay. Oh. oh. Lorraine, my sister and I are not talking. My mum's birthday is coming up. Yeah. Um, we'll just read it for the people who are listening on the podcast. We've just had sort of a bit of a validation for yeah, Renata's guest. She would be so upset with what has happened. Sorry I'm saying this to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, you could not know. I make the best spaghetti bolognese. I make it forever. Make it for everyone's yeah, birthday. everyone's birthday. There's, There's no, no way. way you could... Oh, well, she told me. <laughs> Renata knows she everything. She knows. She knows about I the spaghetti lie. bolognese. She knows about it. And the cheese. It's the cheese. That's the secret. It's the cheese. And she's all over me. She's got both hands on my shoulders now. And she's very adamant. So I really needed to tell you that, Lorraine. Bless your soul, my darling. So for those who don't know, Renata is a medium. Um... And she's obviously picking up things as they come to visit oh, us in the visitor. middle of our show. Sorry. That was and, important to tell her, Rain. Yeah, and as the Long Island medium says, I've just got to tell them. I can't ignore <laughs> it. They won't go away. All right, so let me get on with them a twist oh, sorry. if that's okay. All right, now this is where I got a little bit sad for poor old Sir William. Um, the anthropologist Edward Clodd noted that crooks had very poor eyesight which may have explained his belief in spiritualist phenomena. <laughs> and quoted William Ramsey as saying that Crooks is so short-sighted that despite his unquestionable honesty, which I love, he cannot be trusted in what he tells you he has seen. Oh, because he may not have seen it. 
or might have been a bit blurry, but they had other witnesses, and there was somebody under the table. Um, oh, and excuse me, he's got glasses. Look at him. Yeah, Bless he's him. got glasses. Look, look. So keep your factual statements to yourself. Um, all right, so biographer William Brock uh, wrote that Crooks was evidently short-sighted, but did not wear spect spectacles until the 1890s. Um, he may have had a monocle or a pocket magnifying glass. Because anyone's seen my husband, he normally has three sets of different magnifying glasses sometimes, which he wears all at the one time. Yeah. Um, what limitations this imposed upon his psychic investigations, we can only imagine. So after studying reports of Florence Cork, the science historian Sherry Lyons wrote that the alleged spirit Katie King, who was a manifestation through seance, was at times um, Cook herself, which they used to do because the pressure became so hard to perform and produce phenomena that they mm. did start to fake things. doesn't mean they always fake things. It just means that sometimes they did fake things. Um, uh and here was a man of the flawless scientific reputation who discovered a new element but could not detect a real live maiden who was masquerading as a ghost. Yeah. Uh, and um, Cook was repeatedly expo exposed as fraudulent medium, but she had been trained in the arts of seance, which managed to trick crooks. Look, there was another piece of information um, that I read about this whole thing. Um, <clears throat> and this particular uh, lovely uh, medium, she was quite young when Crooks was involved with her mm -hmm. and they kind of think that there may have been a little bit of a love mm, a interest bit of a, there, a bit of a tryst, <laughs> and that may well be why he yes. believed her so deeply. And mm. sadly that happened a couple of times apparently. Yeah. So this is where, if you... If, if you, this is why it's so hard for me to believe in things openly sometimes, and I'll be honest about it, because you get fearful of being ridiculed if it's found out to be fake. Mm. You can only give your interpretation of what you have seen to the best of your ability with your honesty. And if it turns out to be wrong later on, then you go, well, hell, I was wrong. But mm. at the time, it was really believable. Yeah. Um, it doesn't mean that, that I'm a bad person. Um, may mean I'm gullible or I didn't look for what I should have been looking for and I've certainly learnt a lot as I've gone gone along my little journey um, but yeah all right so in a series of experiments in London England at the House of Crooks in February 87 87 75 I'm getting your disease the medium Anna Eva Faye managed to fool Crooks into believing she had genuine psychic powers. Faye later confessed to her fraud and revealed the tricks that she had used. Regarding Crooks and his experiments with mediums, the magician Harry Houdini, I love Houdini, suggested that Crooks had been deceived. The physicist, physicist Victor Strenger wrote that the experiments were poorly controlled and his desire to believe blinded him to the chicanery is that what you say chicanery. chicanery of his psychic subjects uh and that that is another issue for um for paranormal investigators ghost hunters spiritualists all those people is that you want to believe so badly that Sometimes you'll overlook things that yeah. you think, mm, no, look, I saw that, but I'm just going to ignore that because everything else is just so wonderful. Um, you, you have to weigh it up very carefully. Another time he was tricked was uh, with a fake spirit ph photograph of his wife. Now, Oliver Lodge, who I think was friends with Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, yep. revealed that there'd been obvious signs of double exposure and the picture of Lady Crooks had been copied from a wedding anniversary photograph but Crooks was convinced spiritualists uh, um, was a convinced spiritualist and claimed it was genuine evidence for spirit photography, and that's a perfect example of um, wanting to believe so badly that that's your loved ones who have come forward yeah. to to give you a sign that they're present. And I understand that. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, it, it gives them peace of mind that their loved ones are still around them and trying to make communication. And so um, it is today. It is, yeah. yeah. That doesn't change. You know, you, you lose a loved one and your deep grief uh, and the fact that you feel most certainly that you will never be able to touch them physically again mm. is just pain beyond anything that can be conceived. And so. that's with animals as well. Yep, for sure.
you must find that as a medium sometimes in a psychic reading that um, you will give people information and they want it to be so badly of someone that they wanted to hear from that they'll twist it until it fits. Yeah, until it fits. Yeah. yeah. Most definitely. Yeah. And we have to be really careful um, as psychics and mediums not to allow ourselves to feel that um, we will take anything just so that it um, seems to you, Sarah. make it fit. Yeah. Yeah. And Sarah, thank you for reminding mm -hmm. me. So we've got some first time watchers. Thank you for joining us. Um, and notifications are turned on. Thank you, Sarah, for reminding that. Um, if you could make sure that you have subscribed to our page, clicked that you like it and uh, follow us. If you're on YouTube, make sure you've sub subscribed to the little bell down the bottom so that you can uh, follow our story. So. Mm -hmm. That and, brings, have you got yeah. anything more to add about no, Sir William? Apart no. from the fact that we really respect him. We do him. love him. We yep. love him. We do love him. We respect him immensely. And it really is very, um, a, a really great thing to dig deeply into those who started all of this for us over 100 years ago. Um, and the members who started off. Um, all of these beautiful societies and clubs. And there's a big and risk for yeah. him as a scientist to say, I believe in life after death. Mm. Yeah. And that I have evidence. That's huge. Yep. So we're going to actually finish up the first part go away. of the vodcast. So don't go away. She just we'll, show. To... we'll be back. So she's just finished the uh, vodcast because we now record this for our vodcast which you can find on Podbean I think it is um, and while we're here we would like to uh, thank you to all our Patreon uh, members who have joined up and I wanted to give a big sh shout out to Joanne Masters who has joined us as one of our Grand Pooh Bars. Do we have any of our Grand Pooh Bars on there at the moment? who would like to um, tell them what's been happening in the, the little private group there and um, your extra readings and, and videos and little things we're doing. I hope you're enjoying it. Um, but now we bring you to the second half of our show. So the second half of our show with the letter C. It's like Sesame Street, isn't it? We're doing C. That's my chair for, squeaking, by the way, for, not my butt. For paranormal strangeness, is about crisis apparitions. This is really interesting. It is really interesting. Mm. So this is uh, an apparition. So a ghost that can be seen. Something that is visual. Not all apparitions, not all crisis apparitions are all about actually seeing a ghost. But we're going to deal with the type that you actually see. So have you or anyone out there ever encountered a crisis apparition well, and do you know what a crisis apparition is? I was going to say what is a crisis apparition and that way people will know if they've encountered one. Oh well that's a really good idea isn't it? I know right? <laughs> so some people claim that a crisis apparition is a ghost that appears to you very close to their death. Right so they have just passed over or are just going to pass over, depending on how you believe how this system works. And they literally appear to tell you that they're going or that they've just died. All right. So um, on my notes, it actually says some people claim that loved ones have contacted them after death. So I would suggest that that really means very soon after death. So within the first hour, within the first half hour, um, the 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 uh, apparition of the loved one who has just passed will appear and literally literally say I'm here to say goodbye. All right, so we, you, you could imagine is so much of a shock. Um, you would think, well, why why is Auntie Joan standing there looking at me, going I want to say goodbye. So it and is. And can I have your scone recipe before yeah, you go? It's, it's uh, yeah, crazy, crazy. Would be a crazy experience. I've never had. A crisis no. apparition appear so it would be yeah oh Susan says my great uncle appeared to my great-grandmother at his home in East Maitland he died at Passchendaele yeah wow. yeah so paranormal invest investigators call these events crisis apparitions and say they take many forms normally it is the 
loved one appearing, making an appearance, a very short appearance, uh, literally straight after that moment of death. Some witnesses say apparitions appear lifelike and that the images are reassuring. So it's like, I'm gone, don't worry, everything's okay. I just wanted to tell you that I'm no longer, no longer here. And there seems to be no level of distance or anything that, no. um, you know, stops You these can be apparitions. on the other side of the world. Yep. Yep. So reports of these encounters are uh, materialising on online discussion groups and books, most definitely. So there are books all about crisis apparitions. And certainly a lot of people have actually posted online to say that they have had these experiences. And I'll read you a story um, about one in a moment. Um, local ghost hunting groups have also sprung up um, and have explored this because this is a type of haunting that can occur in a home. Um, Samantha says, my sister woke up screaming, saying our dad was at the end of the bed when he was supposed to be at work. He was oh. gone by this time in a truck accident. Oh, wow. oh that's awful. Wow. Yes, exactly. And Maxine says, my godmother... Um, her, my godmother's husband appeared in the bathroom in her house when I stayed there. Yep. Um, so although such encounters are chilling, they can also be very comforting. And witnesses and paranormal investigators state that in most cases, even though it's such a shock, the person who sees this apparition just feels so blessed that the person has appeared to them to say goodbye because in most cases one of the, the the greatest anxieties is that you never got to say goodbye to the person who's who's passed over yeah, and particularly if you just had a fight or something like that and then you you feel like it's all unfinished and it can lead to such anxiety for the rest of your life so popping yeah. in to say goodbye may just be enough to say i'm okay don't fret and you're going what then you get a phone call yep so scientific research on crisis apparitions is scant. I dare say there is more and more of it happening as more stories get recorded, though. But there are lots of theories, as there are lots of theories about all of this sort of stuff. And that's, again, one of the things that, as a paranormal investigator, don't compartmentalise things too quickly. Make sure that you are open-minded with what is going on. Listen to people's stories and allow them to tell their stories as truthfully with all the emotion that they have attached to that story. And it's really important to believe them. Really, really important because sometimes people hold on to these stories forever. And as an investigator, you are the first person to hear that story without, you know, with that sense of understanding that comes with you being an investigator who has allegedly heard many of these stories and will not say to the person you're going crazy yeah so one of the theories is a person in crisis someone who is critically ill or dying telepathically transmits an image of themselves to someone they have a close relationship with but they're usually unaware they're sending a message so in other words they may well be on their deathbed or in their last hours but telepathically they have the energy to send messages through to their loved ones knowing deep down in their subconscious mind that they will never be able to physically see them again so it's like a bit of teleportation isn't it or um, yeah. out of body I've thing. actually heard I hope I'm not jumping into a no, part of your ahead. story um, no. I was sorry that's my dog <laughs> thanks cool <laughs> um, of crisis apparitions also in accidents when there's been a uh, a car accident or something and the person doesn't die and it's a projection of themselves at a moment of time that causes such anxiety that their personality jumps to the person that they have a strong connection with appears in front of them and then snaps back and apparently when that has happened the person that appears is the apparition, uh, apparition is standing there looking very confused at why they are there um, and then they snap back 
So that's that's the sort of crisis of um, the person involved in a horrific accident or some. I think they're normally knocked unconscious at that time. They could be near death and then are saved, but um, the the shock of what's just happened to them causes this psychic projection to occur. Mm. So Susan Davey has mentioned the word bilocation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, two places at once. <coughs> Um, I guess the body, yeah, body is in one place, but the energy, the soul, is in another. Mm. They talk about this long thread that is still associated with the body. So when you talk about snapping well, back, cord. the silver cord, yep, snaps you back in. So just an, another theory that uh, is around with regard to crisis apparitions is that these crisis apparitions are guardian angels. And they're sent to comfort the grieving. grieving. Uh, another theory. Hang on, would that mean that then the what is ever is appearing to them is a doppelganger? Yes. Is there appearing as the loved one? Yeah, that would be true. That We're doing true. that next week, I believe. <laughs> doppelganger. Mm. <laughs> so another theory says that it's all the trick of the brain that people in mourning unconsciously produce apparitions to console themselves after losing a loved one. So this is. Um, more of the fact that the person in mourning is the person in crisis rather than the person that is having um, the experience of death. So this is two different types of crisis apparitions. Mm. The one who has actually passed or is passing, who is in crisis, who appears, and the person who may well be in crisis because of mourning or um, going through anxiety, stress, depression, all of that sort of stuff, who so deeply, deeply wants that connection back that they create the apparition. Right. So two different types of crisis apparition there. So that's a psychokinetic energy sort mm. of thing, the way you have abilities, latent abilities, or abilities that are actually active, and you, you create a form. Mm. And I just want to give wow. a quick shout out to Cara Windsor, who just became a uh, Grand Pooh Bar Parastalker. Oh, thank, thank you, Cara. Thank you, Cara. Thank we'll you. talk to you later. So not all apparitions are limited to visions. The spirit of a dead person can communicate with a loved one through something as subtle as the sudden whiff of a favourite perfume. And we hear this a lot, that um, Grandma's perfume magically sort of appeared in a room and you can you could smell her or you know great granddad's pipe um also oh that's beautiful mm, isn't it mm. that's a very nice perfume brought to you by seance perfumes <laughs> sorry i had it in my pocket and i just that was just too good an opportunity to think way to a plug except it's been sitting in my pocket so <clears> I've, <throat> I've scratched it up a bit but it smells so good so sometimes you can just sense the presence of someone close to you like i did um, before and it seemingly comes out of nowhere and afterwards you find out that that person was in some kind of crisis at the time of the vision mm. and this can go back as subtle as and I wouldn't classify this as a crisis apparition but we sometimes get these images of our friends or family in our mind mm. and this great urge to give them a call yes or to find out what's happening my What's friend wrong? Jen Ben does that to me all the time I'll be having a really shitty bad time something really horrible's just happened and she'll ring up and say you okay and I go what <laughs> how did you know she'll oh, just know it's spidey senses mm. yeah so people who are extremely close develop a virtual telepathic link that exists in and beyond the world um and yeah it makes us terribly connected and i mean the whole thing is that you know the, the saying is we are connected to everyone else in the world in some way shape or form we're all connected we're all of our energies are connected so jeff belanger who we met many many years <gasps> ago village. yes um who has done so much work and so much great writing that's jeff belanger um get some of his books they're fantastic actually says there's an interconnectedness between people. Do you know how you're close to someone and you just know they're sick or there's something wrong? Yeah. Now, I want to read you a little story. And this was sent in by Chelsea. And it was on one of those um, sites where you can send in your ghost stories. This oh. one comes from Australia. And she writes, <coughs> pardon me. I have been witness to many paranormal experiences in my life. 
but one experience certainly stands out in my mind involving what I believe to be a crisis apparition. This is an apparition that quite often visits people in forewarning of a death. It was July 1997. I was 19 years old. So was I. And I had not long split up from my first serious boyfriend, David. Okay, so there was anxiety in mm -hmm. the air. Yep. I had gone to bed and I was tossing and turning, feeling very uneasy and could not fall asleep. All of a sudden, I sat bolt upright in my bed which was facing the open bedroom door. I saw very vividly the spirit of a young male standing at the foot of my bed. He was wearing a striped rugby style top and had short reddish brown spiky hair. Wow. The scariest thing was that he looked like very much, he looked very much like David, only an evil lookalike. An evil lookalike. And the evil, evil is the only word that I can describe this awful apparition. I stared completely frozen at this apparition for about 10 long seconds and then screamed at the top of my lungs. When I screamed, the apparition disappeared from the room, which left it extremely cold. My mum came rushing into my room, wondering what was wrong. All I could say was, mum, I swear I have seen a ghost. Needless to stay, say, I stayed awake all night with the light on. Two days later, my best friend and her boyfriend called late at night to say they were coming over because they had to tell me something they couldn't say over the phone. So without them telling me, I knew David was dead. Oh, wow. Ooh. Sadly enough, he had committed suicide oh. Oh, on a friend's farm the night before. I honestly believe I was visited by a crisis apparition the night before David died. As a forewarning to his death. Well, that I have, could have been his anxiety at the time, as I was talking about that, the, the, as I said, the bilocation. Yeah. I have no idea why this spirit presented itself in such a horrible manner, and the evil grin still bothers me today. Now, the evil grin oh. is, is her way of interpreting what she had seen. Yeah. So we talk about that a lot. Um, yeah. And also the interpretation you may have when you actually see something. So the brain is trying to make sense of what is going on. Um, it very quickly just takes snippets of what is being seen as a total picture. And it's trying to make sense of that. So we can make a judgment call on what we believe is going on. And it may not be, hello my gorgeous, it may not be the exact truth so that's why I go back to saying let's keep an open mind when we do all of this let's not compartmentalize what we believe is going on we can have a theory we can make an assumption but we don't know 100% we don't really know 100% until we can really analyze what has just happened and of course, in most cases, you're also having hearsay. I'm trying to ignore that hearsay um, because if time passes after an apparition has been seen, it gives a person time to think through and they can sometimes add or delete things from the original story. So again, the brain is just remembering snippets and parts. We don't always get what actually happened all we are getting is the information that is being translated through the person's brain and mind and that's what we're getting of the story yeah see somebody else could interpret that as a vengefulness on behalf of the the ex-boyfriend who wanted to get the ultimate revenge in death on his girlfriend yeah and appeared um, laughing with a maniacal look on his face going and say, take that bitch, you dumped me, and then find out that he had killed himself. Mm, then what a thing to live with. So again, you have to be very, very careful. Be careful of your thoughts. As an investigator too, in trying to interpret that for someone, because saying that to, to someone um, can leave long-lasting scars that will need lots of therapy. Yeah. So you have to be extremely, extremely careful with how you talk to people who are going through these things and what you actually say to them. Yeah. Very interesting story, isn't it? The whole is. crisis apparition. And we've had a lot of people posting up some information uh, with regard to what they have seen and what they've experienced. 
So yeah, really, really interesting. Really and interesting. For those who were commenting on the lovely little puppy that I just picked up and put in frame and uh, people who are listening, he, his name is Max and he's been shaved and all we've got left is his lovely fluffy head <laughs> <laughs> and everything else has been, I call him Frank and Max because we, we've got Max at the top and we don't know who owns the body. Yeah, <laughs> he's in shame. He's been shaved. He's like a border collie, very fluffy. <laughs> so we're just going to turn off our... Um, Podcast so we're going to now. say farewell so to our podcast to our people. Podcast listeners. Make sure you subscribe. And you make sure you here. come back for D next week when we will be talking more paranormal strangeness on the Frightfully Good podcast. Now we've got that stopped. <laughs> How's it hanging? <laughs> um, yeah, so Max is a border colleague cross... Um, uh, one side he's got a grand champion uh, bull mastiff and grand champion whippet. So somebody got together at a show. And the other side he's a Siberian husky and a Shiba Inu and border collie. So he has a big fluffy coat. And he's the most gentlest dog. We had a bit of a scare with him the other week where we thought he had cancer of the anal glands. Um, and he's been on antibiotics for five weeks now and they've, they've actually worked out after sticking their finger up his bum several times <laughs> that it's um just a very <coughs> nasty cyst that was not wanting to go so we're all very relieved that max is going to be with us for a lot longer because we love our animals so much now guys are you enjoying the abc of uh, paranormal strangeness are you enjoying the topics? Uh, are we covering them enough for you? Are you getting enough information? Is it enough to keep your interest? Uh, we've got a lot of letters to go. <laughs> so we want to make sure that you um, all still really enjoy uh, the way we're presenting this. Yeah, we don't want it to be dry, bland. Yeah. And like after studying the reports of Florence, the science historian. No, we don't want to do that. We hope we're making it fun for you guys and that you're learning something as well. Yeah. So if you've liked what we've done, please uh, share it around, show other people and um, subscribe, do all those things. Pop over to our, uh, on our Facebook page, the events, have a look what events are going on and you can join us at some of the events live. We've got one coming up soon called Is Your House Haunted? Mm -hmm. uh, for the people of Newcastle and anyone who wants to pop down to Newcastle and join us for the day, it is on in the afternoon so you have plenty of time to get home back to Sydney should you choose to. Uh, and that's being held at <clears throat> Cardiff at Simeon's Hairdressing and uh, he's very kindly uh, allowed us to use his shop and it's a nice big space with tea and coffee and air conditioning. Mm. And we're going to talk lots of topics on what actually uh, constitutes a haunting and what may not be a haunting and the easy way of clearing some things if it really isn't a haunting. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, not everything is uh, haunting. Um, some things can actually occur within a house that make it seem like it is, but it's not. And you, your house doesn't have to be haunted to attend. No, no. You're quite if you're often, interested. You're just interested in any of that sort of stuff. You come and join us. Yeah, yeah. Now, Anne, Miss oh, Anne, yes. we um, have a special, a, a special little Well, yeah, deal. people sometimes don't realise with the Oz Paratech, uh, as most of you know, I sell paranormal equipment, that we actually do have some um, packages. packages that we've packaged together, like a, a beginner's ghost hunting kit and uh, the intermediate ghost hunting kit. So our beginner's ghost hunting kit is not that... <laughs> is uh, an EMF meter, so that's your K2. We can take it out of the plastic. Can take it out of the plastic. All right, so we, we, you've got your K2 for your EMF and a digital recorder so that you can record what you're doing and look for electronic voice phenomena. Now, to find electronic voice phenomena, you have to listen back to the recordings, my friends. How many of you out there have hours and hours and hours of recordings that you haven't listened back to? I used to have to do it for Q Station. I used to have to listen for hours of that. It was difficult. Anyway, the other one, um, the intermediate. Also, oh, can I just can I just finish finish up on that? So we have the K2 and the digital recorder. So that normally would be two hundred and eight dollars, which includes GST. But you can buy that for one hundred and ninety two. So that and that for that and that, uh, fifteen dollars postage. And then we have. This, this, 
and this, which I've called the intermediate. So you've got your digital recorder, um, the SB7 with a free speaker and your K2. Uh, that's called Ghost Hunting Intermediate Kit. And that one normally retails for $343, but you can get that for $320. So just with afterpay. Some, yeah, there's afterpay as well. Don't forget afterpay. Yeah. Mm, what else do we have to, to report on? We've um, got our dates locked in for Dubbo. We have, we have. We've got our dates locked in for Dubbo. Um, at this stage, we're planning um, two investigations per evening, uh, and they're both going to be Ghost Hunting 101. So nice and easy, simple, two hours. Come in, have some fun, enjoy it. Would you like a sleepover? Because we can ask. We can make the Saturday night the late one a sleepover if people are interested. Mm, that would be so cool. <laughs> I don't think they've ever done a sleepover at Dubbo Jail. So, yeah, very, very, very good. Um, and, yes, we have um, our first uh, Tomago house is totally booked out. But we do have places for Grosman House coming up. Um, that's in April. I know that seems a far distance away but please valentine's day i know oh yes valentine's day bring your loved one or if you don't have a loved one we can hook you up with a ghost i know for a ghost there's hunt. lonely prisoners there at the at jail the maitland jail what what more romantic way than to be locked in a cell with your loved one <laughs> for a ghost hunt as yeah, you do as you do we're planning some little special events for those lovely people where they can bond mm -hmm. with the dead <laughs> They can have a threesome or a foursome. Well, no, je crois. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What else have we got? Anything else? No, um, join us on Patreon. It's really, really important for us because it helps support us and what we do and it allows us to bring you greater content, um, visit more places, do more videos. Uh, We're actually planning sort of another haunted hotel um, when we go to the Prince Henry Hospital for Grandparents' Day. Yes. We're going to um, investigate somewhere in Sydney, find a hotel that we can stay at. Um, we will be using the Patreon funds to do that and we'll <coughs> go live for you guys so that you can see a, a new location that we normally wouldn't have gone to. So yeah. we thank you for your support there. Um, and it just, look, it don't feel you have to. It's not something you have to. You can... Go as little as two bucks, it is American, five bucks, ten bucks a month. Um, and it's just a way of freeing us up to uh, allow us to go do more ghosty things that we can share with you guys. Yeah. So thank you again for listening. Um, we are on to D next week <gasps> and we will be back on we're Monday. Do demons. But, but, but we're back on Thursday. Don't forget Thursday. Yeah, for our live tarot half hour from... Seven no eight thirty eight eight thirty eight thirty eight thirty for eight thirty to nine and then at nine o'clock this week we will be jumping on to our private um, Paris Talker Patreon page uh, the Grand Pooh Bars had their free session last week mm -hmm. so it will be the uh, the five dollar Paris the five dollar Paris Talkers will get their uh, bonus session this week and then the week after we'll be back onto the Grand the Grand Pooh Bars so the Patreon Paris Talkers get it once a month and the uh, other guys get it twice a month. And it was really great. We did it last yeah. week and be able to spend the time with people and, and work through their issues using the cards as a focus. It was fantastic. I felt very privileged to be part of that. Yeah. Anyway, we need to yep. go. Nighty nights, ah. everyone. Have a great week. Hope you've enjoyed the episode. Share it around and uh, make sure you pop over and see us on the dark side. Bye. Bye.